Hello sewing friends, Deb here, Slap Happy Sewing, back again. I have not vlogged since Christmas, but I aim to try and get back into it again. Before I start, just want to say thank you to all of you who sent me little messages. It's so sweet to be to think that maybe that I'd stuck in your mind and it does motivate me to try and keep on sewing. I do realise that uh, for many people it's it's really handy to have somebody with the same body type as they have um, and maybe that's why some of you watch me. So I am a size um, in New Zealand sizes which I think are like English sizes. Oh my cat. Shh. Size 18 to 20. Um, I'm five foot eight inches tall and generally when I'm sewing I would make a size 18 around the shoulders and then um, make a 20 there on in. I have a quite a large bust, a G cup, so I'm always trying to sort of make things work with that bust. Right, that's enough of an introduction. Let's get on with it. First thing I'm going to show you is a top that I made. So if I move over here, I'll put it up here. And uh, this was the Jody jumper, which I think was from some sewing magazine. I actually got the pattern for a dollar in a charity shop. Simply sewing it was. I quite liked the raglan sleeve aspect of them. Uh, I thought I would give it a try. So let's have a look. So the first one I made was some stash fabric that I had that was a little bit kind of damp smelling um, and I had got my fabrics out and I was trying to air them out and maybe get rid of some of them if they uh, couldn't be used. So I thought I would make a muslin of this and this is the muslin. Now, um, having made the muslin, I realised that, that the collar's got a tendency to stand up a bit and I think I, I notice it does even on the pattern if you look on the pattern it does it so I think that's maybe part of the style but anyway when I made another one of these in a in a fleece fabric which of course wasn't as stretchy as the last one it actually stood up even more however I do like this one but I think I can wear this with a jumper underneath for the winter. Anyway, we'll see. It would have it's fabric I would have thrown away anyway, so I'm not going to fuss about it. Next thing was this Sinclair. I'll show you it here. So yes, this this blouse is I really like the fabric and it was stash fabric that I had bought in charity shop and I love the colours so I thought I would give it a go. I, I do like it and actually funnily enough I do like it with these green shorts. Who would have known that green would have been a great colour? It does make me feel inspired to try and make some more coloured pairs of trousers. I've got a lot of black and navy trousers but sometimes I think a coloured trouser is much more interesting. The next thing is this which is the Sinclair Skylar this is stash fabric I was definitely going to throw away and I thought well you know I'm not really sure of the colors the stripe is purple and green lime green and I had this big piece of lime green fabric that went along with it I thought mm, don't really don't know um, and then I thought well whatever but let's just make a, a Skylar hoodie and see how it goes and then at least I'll know if it fits now um, I actually think it's quite jolly. I think it came out quite well. Um, it was it was a good practice run. Um, I think the cowl neck is a bit stiff. Um, and there's a lot of fabric on the front where my tummy is, which of course is my problem area. So, however, I mean, this is probably going to be a garment that I can wear in the winter at home. And if I don't wear it, well, I'll give it to charity. But anyway, I do like that pattern, but I think if I was going to make one that I would possibly find more flattering, I would maybe do it in, you know, darker colors at the sides and maybe even make it a bit Maybe not use so many, maybe not even put the pockets in the front. I don't know, not to have all those layers because it's actually got three layers of, in this case, quite thick fabric. So there's that one. 
I have also been doing quite a bit of, um, make, you know, going through my wardrobe. When my, my daughter came over and she stayed for like six weeks. Yes, she did stay for six weeks. And then when she went, I gave her my great big suitcase because she couldn't get all her stuff into her own set suitcase. And that meant that I had to throw out all the clothes that were in the suitcase. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to have a really good cull of my wardrobe. And I did cull quite a few me made things, um, which in a way is quite sad. It's quite hard to let go of things you've made yourself. I've, I think I've taken the learning from it that while I do like to use sort of secondhand and charity shop fabric, I do need to be perhaps a little more sure that what I'm making is something that I will want to wear. Because, you know, I've got plenty of clothes and I tend to just go past things that I don't really, really like completely. But I'm not sorry that I've done that for the first few years of my sewing because I think I've really sort of, when I see how I was at the beginning and that how I am now, I think my skill level has got a lot better. Yeah, fabric's expensive, so if you're going to um, learn to sew, then using secondhand fabric is quite a good way to not put too much pressure on yourself, or for me anyway. I'm quite a frugal person and I don't like wasting money. Um, but because most of my fabric was secondhand, even if I didn't wear the garment very much or if I didn't sew it very well or it wasn't really a style that that I decided I liked on me. Because I think before I was sewing, I never really knew what I wanted to wear because I really had to ba basically take what I could get. I found buying clothes so difficult with my figure that um, if something kind of fitted me, I kind of went along with it and bought it. And now with with the infinite choice available in sewing, I think there's a, it's not just the learning how to sew, it's learning what you want to sew, what you're, what's going to suit your body, your taste, your lifestyle, your vibe, um, and, Getting that right has also been quite a learning journey. What else have I been doing? Oh yes, so as part of this, sorry, my cat there. Um, as part of this, he wants his tea. As part of this learning journey, I have also been looking through my what's left that didn't, that survived the cull, but needed a bit of work. And one of the things here was this Sinclair, um, cardigan jacket i liked it i like the shape of it it's made of merino it's a nice piece of secondhand merino i'm not very struck on wearing dark gray but because it's merino i know that i'll wear it because it's so warm for the winter um but i didn't like these great big points i i think they're a little bit out of fashion now but i also found fashion or no fashion that they tended to stick down under my coat so I, what I've done is round them off and um, I'll show you now. So looking now, you see, it's not really changed that much. I've still got the slope, but I've taken that big point off the front. And I think I will alter the pattern because the pattern is more wearable that way too. Yeah, there's a bit more. I've got more to show you, but I won't fit them all into this vlog um, for now. <laughs> Thanks so much to everybody who sent me lovely messages, asking, wishing me well, asking how I was. I really appreciate that. And I will try and get back in a little more regularly. I've got lots more to show you. Until then, bye for now. Have a, have a great week. And tell me what you're doing, what you're sewing in the comments.